Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to RB and Hardware. And in today's video, we're gonna build your next budget mini ITX gaming PC with the NZXT-H210i. And inside we find in this latest and greatest APU called the Ryzen 5 3400G with Vega 11 graphics. And this is based on the Zen Plus architecture. Now this 4 core and 8 thread processor is fast enough for 1080p gaming, which makes this PC you know, a great pick for anyone who want to build a PC right now that they can game on, and then add a budget graphics card, perhaps the RTX 3050 or the RX 6600 once Nvidia or AMD releases their mid-tier GPU sometimes in 2021. Now to get as many FPS or gaming performance, I'm pairing the 3400G with 16GB of super fast 3600MHz DDR4 memory. And in today's video, yeah, we're gonna build this PC together. We're gonna look at gaming performance and benchmarks a bit later, and you should be able to find timestamps down below. And in case you want to build this PC, you'll find all PC components listed down below. And if you don't want to miss any upcoming gaming PC builds, you want to make sure to leave a big like on the video and subscribe to never miss an episode. With that said, let's start with the motherboard. Coming in at $118, the MSI B450 Mini ITX Gaming Plus AC Mesa Base for this build. Now, Gaming Plus AC has a lot of nice features you definitely don't want to skip over. For example, we're getting AC Wi Fi, Gigabit Ethernet, audio, as well as an M.2 slot on the back. Now, unfortunately, as we can see with no heat shield, but still, yeah, it's a nice feature to have. We also find four SATA 3 ports, so as you can hear guys, there's plenty of expandability here if you want to add, let's say, more storage later down the road. Now, there are a few limitations here you also need to be aware of. Since there are only two DIMM slots, you can only have up to 32 gigs of VRAM. And there's only one single 16x PCIe slot, so you can't run SLI or Crossfire. But yeah, considering we're building a super tiny mini ITX gaming PC system, those things shouldn't be a deal breaker to most people anyway. However, I think it's nice to have this in mind. Now, despite the fact that the motherboard only measures 17 by 17 centimeters, yeah, the board offers most, if not everything you need for a very powerful high-end Ryzen PC. MSI is putting a lot of efforts on their BIOS, where all B450 are said to be fully supported by Zen 3 and Ryzen 5000. We got four plus two phase design with massive heat sinks and this is enough to run eight core Ryzen processors without any issues. I also want to say that guys that I got a bit worried when I picked this up and I couldn't find the Ryzen 3000 support logo on the box. I also touched on this in a previous video and it does seem like MSI hasn't updated their boxes as a quick look on Amazon reveals that motherboards nowadays seem to ship with third gen Ryzen support from factory. And yeah, even my came with 3rd gen Ryzen support even though the box said otherwise, so yeah, that's good to know. Now considering everything we just talked about, for $118 makes the MSI the best budget mini ITX board on the market right now. Let's move on to the CPU, and in today's build we're hooking up the Gaming Plus with this AMD's latest and greatest 150 US dollar APU flagship. Under the hood we find 4 cores and 8 threads with a base and boost speed of 3.7 and 4.2 GHz respectively, plus 11 graphics compute units, and this is actually enough to game at 1080p in many games. Now, in terms of CPU performance, we can see that the 3400G is not a whole lot slower than the Core i7 7700K when running Cinebench. However, the gaming performance is a bit slower, so we're gonna look into this a bit later. There's also a CPU cooler uh, that comes included with the processor. And in order to install this, we first need to uninstall these uh, uh, socket brackets you see here. And once these have been removed, we can install the cooler. As for RAM, I found this 3600MHz kit super cheap from Corsair. And yeah, I urge you guys to pick high speed memory sticks for this build. As the way the Ryzen and these APUs work, you'll gain more performance by having higher rated mem sticks. 
And because the GPU unit doesn't have any video memory itself, it essentially has to borrow that from the system. So that is the reason why we want as fast DDR4 sticks as possible to get as much performance out of the GPU as possible. So once we reach this point where RAM, a CPU and cooler has been installed, it is time to install the motherboard in the case. So in today's build, we're gonna make use of NZXT's H210i coming in at around $109. Now there's two variants available, there's the i variant and there's the non i variant and this is actually $80 so that's effectively $30 off. The main difference between the two is that the i variant comes with an RGB strip as well as a smart hub that lets you control all the fans and monitor temperatures in a software called CAM. Now the H210i is a mini ITX enclosure so it's got a fairly small footprint as we can see. However the case is actually quite a lot bigger than those mini, you know those super mini cases that you might have seen like the Dan cases or the Loki ghosts. Yeah those cases, yeah those are you know a lot smaller in comparison. Now the NZXT H210i measures 210 by 372 by 349 millimeters, and here is a comparison with the P350X from Fantex on the left. Technically guys, this is the H200i, and NZXT made a few updates to the H lineup where the 210i received a USB Type-C port in the front for example. And there is now a single captive thumb screw and opposite the four screws to remove the tempered glass. Anyway, the whole case feels very expensive and pretty much everything is made of metal, even the front is. But as we can see, there is not a whole lot of air intake and NZX dissolves this by having these wide uh, perforated sides. But yeah, still it's something to have in mind. This is not the perfect solution if you want good airflow, however, it is still good enough if you don't plan on maybe overclocking. Now there is room to fit two 120 fans in the front, a single 120 fan in the top, as well as a 120 fan in the back, and these two comes pre-installed by the way. Now the case comes in black, white, as well as red. Now after installing the screws that holds the tempered glass, we can install the IO shield on the motherboard. Now after that, I ended up flipping the case down. It makes it easier to secure the board and line up the ports to the IO shield on the back. You can simply grab the cooler and align the ports with the IO shield, and then makes the installment a piece of cake. And the main reason why I ended up using a liquid cooler was because NZXT claims that there is enough clearance to fit a 240 radiators in the front. So in order to test that, I ended up using the Arctic Freezer 2 a 240 liquid cooler. And as we can see, you can fit an all-in-one solution here if you want to as well. And the installation was very simple as you can remove the bracket that is holding the radiator in the front. Now aesthetically, yeah, I know what you're thinking, this would have looked cooler having the radiator flipped around but according to Gamers Nexus, we would have flipped this around, it can cause the pump having to work harder because of the nature how the liquid coolers are designed so honestly I think this still looks okay, although yeah it gets pretty tight in here but there is still clearance enough to mount the graphics card underneath. Moving on to the SSD, now once again ended up picking the A400 from Kingston. It has dropped in price quite a lot over its lifespan and although this isn't the fastest SSD outer, it is more than enough for our PC build today and 1TB worth of storage should serve us for quite some time. As for the power supply, yeah, I have been using Corsair for many builds now, as you guys know, never ever had any issues. Now see my modular cables allows for a much cleaner and nicer looking PC build overall, but as you can see there is not a whole lot of cables here. And I do recommend opting for a modular or a semi modular a PSU, especially when you are uh, building you know, in super small enclosure like this. Now this is 650 watt but you can definitely go for 550 and that will give you plenty of extra headroom in case you want to upgrade to Nvidia's upcoming 3050 or perhaps the uh, Radeon RX uh, 6600 for example. Anyway with the installation done time for some gaming benchmarks. 
And before we start uh, testing the built-in Vega graphics, let's have a quick look at the pure CPU performance. And I decided to include a wide range of similarly priced processors. And this is to essentially give you guys what the gaming performance you can expect in case you decide to upgrade to, let's say, RDNA 2 or Nvidia Ampere later down the road. Now, as we can see, yeah, generally speaking, the 3400G is actually quite a lot faster than the uh, older 2400G. Now, looking at the benchmarks at 1080p, uh, the 3400G is faster than the Core i7 7600K and it's not a whole lot slower than the 1600X. Moving into 1440p, the 3400G is even more competitive. And as for the most part, as we can see, you won't be as CPU limited when you're moving up in resolution. Any budget CPU these days, there is limits how far you can push these 4 core parts. And it's obvious that modern games nowadays can utilize more than 4 cores and 8 threads. Then again, considering the $150 price tag here, and you're also getting graphics, there is no denying that there is a lot of performance that you're getting from the 3400G. So let's look at gaming with the integrated graphics in 1080p and 900p. Now first up we got Rocket League and Doom from 2016 stand against the $99 3200G. Now this cheaper little brother got fewer CPU cores and it's also lacking SMT, which yeah, is taking a hit in the performance as we can see. Now Rainbow Six Siege did very well actually. Of course, we're using the lowest possible graphics quality preset. Now Fortnite also plays well at 1080p, but again, we're using the lowest setting here. And Far Cry New Dawn is a tad bit much for the 3400G to handle, while World War Z for example, ran fantastic. So as we can see guys, it can fluctuate quite a lot between games therefore it's good idea to look up the game or the games you're planning on playing to see where the vega 11 lands for that specific title but overall for being an integrated gpu i think it does fantastic all pc parts are linked up down below and if you got any questions please let me know I also made a similar $500 gaming PC build not that long ago based on the very same APU so in case you're interested in a slightly bigger enclosure you find that video linked up down below. Now, if you ever want to play together or you just want to chat with me you can find my steam down below let me know what other PC builds you would like to see coming up next now watch either of these two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.